And good morning, body of Christ. Praise the Lord. This is Mary Banks, your Bible teacher, and this is some Bible talk today. We got an interesting subject that we're going to be talking about. Bless the Lord, and I'm excited about it, glory to God, because it's a subject matter that we really, really need. We really need to discuss. I mean, there are there are things that are happening in the body of Christ so rapidly because when you see things happening in the world, all truth is parallel. When you see a, a conglomerate of things going on one after another in the word in the world, then you see the same thing. There's something happening in the body of Christ at that same rate. And what's happening in the body of Christ is that God, God is defining, he's defining his church. That's very important. We need to talk about that. God is defining the church. Everything, according to Jesus Christ, everything that says, Lord, Lord, is not, is not a part of the body of Christ. Okay. Everything that says, Lord, Lord, is not going to make it into the kingdom. Amen. So I'm, I'm excited about the Lord favoring his people favoring us to define what is truly the body of Christ. Now, that definition of the body is going to come, it's going to come basically by those who obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. Those who obey it, those who obey the commandments of God, those who find themselves walking in the Holy Spirit, that is going to be the real church. That's the church that that Christ is going to rapture out of here. Bless the Lord. I want to read a scripture to you. It's, um, it's found in uh, St. John. This, I love to go back to, to the teachings of Jesus Christ. St. John 18 and 36. Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Now, the reason I cited that scripture, because that's going to be our foundational base scripture. Because the title of our uh, lesson today is Christ and politics. Christ and politics. So this scripture is very, very relevant to that subject matter. It's very re relevant. Glory to God. Jesus said that his kingdom is not of this world. We pride ourselves. We pride ourselves at, um, you know, being the body of Christ and and being sons of God. We, we, we throw that term around out there. Amen. All the time. We are the sons of the living God. Um, well, that means that we are in the kingdom of God. Now we know that because, you know, we, 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 we preach it, we teach it, we testify it, but when it comes down to us actually living in the kingdom, living in the kingdom of God, that is just not how we embrace that truth. We don't embrace it. The body of Christ as a whole does not embrace the fact that we are not of this world. You know, he said, you know, that, we, you know, we are not of this world. All right. And so if, if, if Jesus said that his kingdom is not of this world and we have been brought into the kingdom of God, right? We've been brought into the kingdom of God. Then that means that we ourselves are not of this world and we don't live we don't, we literally are citizens of the kingdom. We are citizens of the kingdom of God. That's our citizenship. Now, sometimes, sometimes it, um, it, it, you know, sometimes it gets a little shady, it gets a little gray, you know, when we, t when, 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 when we talk about the knowledge of that versus actually the mindset. OK, we can have knowledge, but not allow that knowledge to form the mindset in us. OK, we can we can 
teach and preach the kingdom of God all day and all day long. And um, we can do all the theology on it. But there's a difference in knowing something and allowing it to form a mindset in you. We need a mindset in the body of Christ that says, I am not of this world. I live in the kingdom of God. I am a citizen of the kingdom of God. I may live in this world, but I'm not a citizen of this world. I can't have dual citizenship. Okay. I, I you know, now on paper, yes, but in reality, we are citizens of one kingdom and that's the kingdom of God. Okay. And so we are not indebted. Watch this. Now we are not indebted to the flesh. We're not indebted to the flesh. That means we're not indebted to, to our fleshy environment. We're not in, indebted to the goings on of flesh. Okay. We're not indebted to the goings on of flesh. We are indebted to the kingdom of God. Now, as it relates to us be, being citizens of another kingdom, right? As it relates to us being citizens of another kingdom, li listen to what Paul said to Timothy in uh, 2 Timothy 2 and 4. And those of you that are listening, you need to take some notes here. Glory to God, because these podcasts are not just designed for you, to, for your knowledge only. It's designed for you to pass the knowledge on. So I'm advising you if you're able to take notes or, you know, uh, go back later and take your notes. If you're on the job and you're listening on the job, whatever. Just go back and take some notes so you will know these scriptures that you can minister these things to those uh, in the body of Christ. Amen. Second Timothy 2 and 4 says, No man that warreth entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. Now, I, I want us to think about that. God has chosen us to be soldiers, told us to be good soldiers, good soldiers. Amen. Uh, able to endure hardships. Okay. Now, but we don't really deal with this particular aspect of being a soldier of the Lord. He says, if you are going to please me as a soldier, if you're going to please me, the one that chose you, to be a soldier in my army. Don't entangle yourself with the affairs of this life. In other words, don't entangle yourself with the affairs of the world. Now, the reason why this lesson is so important at this particular time is because we're going into the midterm elections here in America and probably ele elections all around the world. And, uh, as we approach those elections, God sh has revealed that um, the mindsets of the saints are actually revealed in the approaching elections. What are you saying, Dr. Banks? I'm saying that during election season, the real um, mindset, the real spiritual disposition of the people of God are revealed. Um, but you know why? Because politics, politics is what many people, even those in the body of Christ, rely on for their livelihood. They rely on politics for their uh, to provide them with a certain way of life. And so they are very passionate. Christians are very passionate about their politics. Glory to God, because they see that as providing a certain way of life or a certain power, a, a certain power and um, to make the decisions for the the forwarding of our country, of our nations. Glory to God. And so if you see politics, watch this now, if you see politics as the spiritual or the the guide, that, that thing that is going to provide um, a peaceable life for you, glory to God, that is going to provide a, um, a power base so that you can you and your party can make the decisions for how your nation is, is going to uh, go forward, move forward. If that means so much to you, then I'm going to go back to where Jesus went went with the rich young ruler. You can't serve two masters. 
You can't serve God and this world too. You can't serve the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the world. You got to choose one or the other. And actually saints, the truth is that if you are embedded in politics, if that's where you are, if you're embedded in politics, then you've already made a choice. Even though you go to church, even though you, um, say all the right things relative to the spiritual things that come forth from the pulpit. Um, You may even be a teacher in your church or a a pastor in your church. You know, uh, you may be an auxiliary leader or you just, you may be a choir member, whatever. But when, when politics come into the picture, the real disposition is revealed. Now, The sad part about that is that many people try to separate in their own mind. Okay. This is the deception. You know, the scripture tells us don't deceive yourself. Well, many have deceived themselves because the, the deception comes when we try to separate our attitude, our disposition, our demeanor, our passion for politics, for the politics of our nations uh, from the passion and the, 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 um, the embracing of the will of God. We try to separate those two. We, we, uh, you know, and our, and, and our responsibility to the church, uh, the kingdom of God. So we have these, these, um, things that are relative to the kingdom of God that we do on a daily basis. We go to church We're we're very loyal, you know, to our church. And, um, you know, that's, that's just who we are. We do, we do diligent at, in the church, nothing the pastor can ask us to do that. We, we don't jump to do, but then when politics come in, when, 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 when there's a, when there's a political, um, basketball being bounced around, glory to God. That's when our true colors come out. That's when our true disposition come out. That's where uh, our spiritual, our spiritual stance. We don't realize that. We don't realize that, that, that our demeanor, the spirit, the passion, we call it passion, but it's a spirit. (laughs) Amen. We walk into, in a, in a, a spiritual, it's a spiritual demeanor. Okay, that thing that we call passion is a spiritual demeanor that we walk in regarding politics. Okay, and now the scripture says you don't entangle yourselves with the affairs of this life if you're going to be a soldier that can please God. Now, does that matter? The question is, does that matter? Because when it comes down to I found this out that when it comes down to um, politics, uh, finances, uh, any type of wantonness at all. When it comes down to, to those issues, we find that, uh, glory to God, our loyalty to God, our loyalty to scripture just simply goes out the window. You know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't come into the recollection. Glory to God. It just doesn't, it just doesn't praise the Lord. So we have to be very careful that we're not deceiving ourselves, okay? That we're not deceiving ourselves uh, so that we can't, uh, we can't please God, amen. Now, I see so many of you are coming on. Bless the Lord, amen. Uh, Hope, Carlene, uh, Eason, uh, Sandra Graham, many of you are coming on. Mabel McLean, shout out to her all the way over in Leesburg. Come on on, glory to God. Come on, glory to God. And and you're welcome to comment in the comment section. I am monitoring the comments and I would like to I would like to to know your your comments. Amen. I would like to know them. So please don't hesitate. Don't hesitate to comment. Glory to God. God is good. He is good, saints. And uh good morning to you also, Grace. Bless the Lord. Now watch this. Watch this now. Galatians 5 and 1, Galatians 5 and 1 says this, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us 
free. Stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Amen. Be not entangled with the yoke of bondage. Glory to God. Well, politics and all that pertains to the world, amen, brings us back into that bondage. Let me show you how it does that. Let me show you how, how uh, our political views, our, the, our political affiliations, our political preferences, um, the, the goings on, the political goings on of our nation. Let me show you the bondage that's in it, in it. You know, you can hear the scripture tells us that in these last days, there's going to be wars and rumors of wars, right? Um, you can hear of threats, threats. You can hear of threats to, um, threats to, uh, our nation, you know, someone may be threatening to attack America. All right. Now there's right now there's a war going on in Ukraine. Okay. And for, for many, many weeks, the, the, the news was consumed. The news, the news was consumed with, um, it was consumed with, with, um, the, the devastation, uh, and desolation that the Russian army was, was leaving in Ukraine. Now, when you hear of a threat to your nation, let's say some other country is, is threatening to attack your nation, you know, that could, could cause extreme fear and anxiety, anxiety in the people of God. If you are tuned in and you believe that, that the political, the politics of your nation um, dictate the way you live, the, the, uh, the life that you're going to be able to live in your nation, glory to God, then now, glory to God, you can be filled with anxiety and fear, okay? Uh, another example is the economy, okay? Some, in some countries, the economy is doing great. Some countries, the, the economy is, is, is tanking out. Uh, inflation, uh, a threat of recession, all of these things, rising gas prices, uh, rising food prices, how are we going to eat, rising uh, real estate prices, how are we going to pay our mortgage, how are we going to pay our uh, rental, amen, property. How, what are we, we going to do here? Everything is tanking out. Uh, stock markets are going down. People are losing thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in the stock market, some people millions. Um, bit, bitcoins and all of this cryptos and all of these, some of these things are tanking out. And so what happens if you are glued into all of that, that brings you back into bondage. It puts a yoke on you and it brings you back into bondage because you, you're listening to the news and, um, your everything is relative to you. Everything is relative to your livelihood. This is the deception. Everything is re relative to your livelihood. Um, uh, the 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 ra the rising in in uh, the cost of living, the 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 threat of war, um, political pol political um, um, things like border crossings and, and, uh, illegal immigrants, or even just immigrants coming in, flooding into your nation. Glory to God. These are, these are things that, that cause you great concern, great concern because your focus has changed. Your focus has changed. Your, your focus is not on Jehovah Jireh. Okay. You sing about him. You sing about him. You say he's a great provider, but when, all, when you are entangled with the politics of your nation, glory to God, Jehovah Jireh doesn't mean anything to you. It does not mean anything, saints. And we have to, we have to own that. If you are there, if you are so hooked up in, into the politics of your nation, you know, um, um, then you're, you're just not, you're not, you're not walking in the spirit. Because the things that God has promised have no meaning to you. 
The things that God has promised does not settle you and give you peace. And if you, if, if, if the, if, if what God has promised us is supposed to bring us peace, if walking in the spirit brings us peace, okay, glory to God. If, if, if it's supposed to bring us peace, then watch this now. If that's supposed to bring us peace, the scripture says that um, the kingdom of God, this kingdom that we live in is righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. When you're entangled with the politics of your nation, you can't find that peace. You can't find that peace in the Holy Ghost because you're not walking in the spirit. You're full of anxiety. You're full of passion against this legislation or that legislation. Glory to God. And you're nervous because, you know, your political party is losing power or may not gain power or uh, is going to get kicked out of office and and now you're going to be at the mercy of another party. Glory to God. So if if that's where you are, then you're not in the spirit. You have no peace. And if you have no peace, it's because you have come now, you have come back and become entangled, entangled with the affairs of this life. Now, another thing that it does, watch this now. When you are entangled with the affairs of this life and you are caught up in politics, glory to God. Now, I'm an American, and so I can use America as an example, uh, but in it, and it may be true for, for other nations, amen, that are listening. If you're listening to this and you're in, in other nations, then this may be true for you. In America, we have two major political parties. We have some side parties, but two major parties. And they are Democrat and Republican, okay? But now, they are grossly divided, grossly divided on their politics, okay? Uh, If you look, read the agenda that the Republicans have, it's one thing. And you read the agenda that the Democrats have, it's another. And these are direct opposites. These are direct opposites, Glory to God. Direct opposites of what um, of what we're supposed to, you know, you know, of, I'm sorry. These are direct opposites of each other. Right. And so where does the son of God stand? Where does the son of God stand in 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 in, in this? Right. You have the Republicans that have an agenda and they fight advocately for their agenda. You have the Democrats that have their agenda, their list of political issues, and they're fighting tremendously for theirs. So where is the son of God? Sadly enough, sadly to say, glory to God, sadly to say, the sons of God can't be found in the middle. The sons of God are either Democrat or Republican. Okay. Most of them. All right. Most of them, they're Democrats or Republicans. Now, is this a sin? Is it a sin to be affiliated with a, um, to be affiliated with a particular party? Is it, is it a sin, uh, to, to vote a certain way or vote with your party? Is it a sin? I'm going to say No. It's not. It's not a sin. I don't believe it's a sin. But there's a a principle that God taught us relative to celebrating holidays or eating things um, that may have been offered to idols. There's a that principle is eat or do unto the Lord. Okay, Uh, if you celebrate a day, if, if some people celebrate Christmas. Glory to God. Some people don't. Christians, all right? Some Christians feel that we shouldn't celebrate Easter. Some Christians feel that it's a pagan holiday and da, 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 da. They say the same thing about Christmas. Now, there are a lot of Christians that do celebrate Christmas as, you know, a time of the birth, you know, to celebrate the birth of Christ, even though we we don't know if he was born December 25th, but we sell, we use that to celebrate, right? Now, the scripture says this, don't criticize the one that that celebrated 
And for the ones that celebrate, don't criticize the ones that don't. Okay. If you celebrate those days, do it unto the Lord. All right. Do it unto God. All right. Now, why? So that it won't be any contention. So that it won't be contention between brothers and sisters. So what does it look like for us to all be in a church? Glory to God. And here comes Christmas. And some of us are getting ready to put up our Christmas trees and our decorations. Glory to God. And, um, but there are others, there are others that feel that, you know, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not, I'm not doing that. Glory to God. I'm not doing that. Okay. That's, that's good. That's, if that's, if that's what you feel, then that is great. Okay. That is just great. But do that, keep that unto the Lord. Don't criticize, don't condemn the ones that do. Now that's a commandment from God, okay? Do what you do unto the Lord. The same principle holds true with politics or with your party affiliation. If you are affiliated with a party, you vote, then do your voting unto God, all right? We don't need to do a whole lot of discussion on it because it genders strife. And the Lord told us to stay away from those things that gender strife. Okay. And so now are we going to abide by that? Or are we so passionate? Are we so passionate that, uh, you know, uh, I got, I got to say something. I got to say something. Glory to God. I just, I, 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 can't, I can't hold it. I got to say something. Now, let me show you, uh, let me show you another reason why. We need to go back to where we're supposed to be in the spirit. Let's go back to the spirit. All right. Let's look at Daniel 4 and 25 and 26. All right. I want you to take these scriptures down. Daniel 4, 25 and 26. The 25th verse says this, that they should drive thee from men and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. Now this is relative. This is Daniel talking to Nebuchadnezzar. He interpreted a dream. Okay. That Nebuchadnezzar had. And um, Daniel is telling him what God is saying to trying to say to him in the dream. And they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven. And seven times, shall pass over thee, that's seven years, till thou know, till thou know the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will. Now look at this, look at this. God rules in the kingdom of men and God give the kingdoms of men to whomever he will give it to. Oh my goodness. Now, where does that leave the sons of God who are livid because their candidate didn't make it? Live it. Live it. <coughs> Have um what what does that what is what does that leave? What does that leave the the sons of God who are so adverse? Um, so much animosity toward the other party that didn't make it. Okay. Where are they? The scripture says God is the one that rules. Oh my goodness. He ruleth. So, and, 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 and Daniel gets very, 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 very specific here. He says, and he give the kingdom. To whomsoever he will. Glory to God. Now it doesn't get any clearer than that. So what are you going to do with that? Sons of God. What are we going to do with that? Are we going to allow God? Are we going to see? It's, 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 it's really sad when the sons of God cannot uh, succumb, submit to this scripture. That's a sad thing. Because that principle has never changed. That has never changed. God ruleth here on earth. And he gives kingdoms. He gives countries, nations, 
governments. He's the one that ruleth. He's the one that makes the decision as to who is going to rule. He makes that decision, not us. You may vote, okay? You go to the polls and you vote for your, your candidate. You do that unto the Lord. But it is God who decides who's going to win. It's God who is the one that installs. God installs leaders. Are y'all working with me here? Glory to God. Amen. Are you working with me here? Now, don't cease to comment since, because this is a podcast. Amen. I, I can see your comments and, and uh, I need to know, are, are you working with me here? Glory to God. Uh, what are we going to do about it? What are we going to do? Are we going to, um, are we going to accept the fact that if my candidate didn't make it, that was God's preference? We have, you know, the last election that was in America, there was so much venom, so much venom and hatred, hatred in the body of Christ because the sons of God, the sons of God took their stance. The pastors, the pastors that were that that lead the body, those who are those who have have a, a great influence in the body of Christ, those who were called to be prophets, those who were called to be evangelists, those who were called to be pastors in the body of Christ took their stance took their stance and, 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 and what did we have? The election was stolen. You know, the election was stolen. Now they, now the, the, the Democrats said that's a big lie, right? They said, that's the great lie. Well, <coughs> the sons of God in our own hearts, we ought to know that that's a lie. The election wasn't stolen. You cannot steal it from God. Okay. How do you steal an election from God when he say he gives the nations, he gives the governments of the nations to whomever he chooses to rule, right? So then, so you can't steal something from God. If God decided that, that a particular individual is going to be a president, prime minister, or, or whatever they, they're called in your nation, glory to God, then that's go, going to be, and it doesn't matter um, how many, you know, opposition, what, what types of oppositions come up against is going to be what God has ordained. Now, if we go to the 26th verse, Daniel four and 26, look at this. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee. After that, Watch this. This is what Daniel is, is, is saying to, um, this is what Daniel is saying to, um, uh, Nebuchadnezzar. He says, now you're going to crop grass and, and you're going to act, you're going to look like a beast and, and, and your hair is going to be matted and you, you're going to be, uh, the dew is going to, uh, uh, rain down on you for at least seven years. You're going to be like a wild beast for seven years. He said until, cause it's going to take that long. For you, uh, listen to what it says. After that, thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. The heavens rule the, in the nations of men. The heavens rule in the nations of men. Now, you can either accept that or you can continue to deceive yourself. Sin against the Holy Spirit. Okay. By not walking in the spirit, sin against the Holy Spirit by ignoring, forfeiting, um, not embracing the peace that the Holy Spirit wants to provide. Okay, you can continue. You can continue to be entangled with the affairs of this life and continue to divide the body. That's the greatest. That is the greatest sin of all to use politics to divide the body. And, and let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, sons of God, what you don't understand is that God himself is using politics. He's using politics to do what 
He's using politics to reveal where you really are, to show you that you're not in the spirit and that you don't have any problem bringing division in the body of Christ. Okay. He's trying to show you that. And see, that's the problem with, uh, it, um, that is the problem that we're facing. It's a very grave problem because whatever the enemy can use to bring division, if he can use you, a son of God, to bring division, his plan is working. His plan is working because division is caused by iniquity. Iniquity, where's the iniquity in that? You say, well, I love people and I, you know, and I love God and I, you know, and I'm faithful to the church. What is the iniquity? The first place is in your heart. It's in your heart and it has separated you from God because that iniquity will not allow you to walk in the spirit. You say, what iniquity, doc? What iniquity? The fact that God told us not to be entangled with the affairs of this life. The fact that you are so passionate about your, your, your power base, your, your, um, political party. And all of your political agendas, you're so wrapped up and tied up in your political agendas, glory to God, until now you have, you have forsaken all the promises of God to the sons of God. He told us that, glory to God, that he will never leave us nor forsake us. God know how to deliver his own out of the temptations of this world. You know what those temptations are? All of the threats, all of the, the attacks, all of the persecutions, all of the things that, that lend themselves to, to trying to knock us off course or trying to get us out of the walk, to walk out of the spirit. Amen. God said, I know how to deliver you out of that. If you would just remain in the spirit and follow my lead, if you would just remain in the spirit and if you would just remain in the spirit and now do what? Obey. Just obey what God has said. Just do what God has, has said. Obey. Obey. Wow. Praise the Lord. And, 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 but now if you're not willing to do that, if you're not willing to do that, if, 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 if you, if you're still so passionate about, you know, uh, this agenda that, that, that your party has, if you're, if you're still so passionate about that, then what, what happens? What happens? You alienate yourself. You alienate yourself from the leading of the Holy Spirit. You alienate yourself from the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. You can't even see the division that you yourself will cause. You can't even see it. Glory to God. If you are affiliated, then be affiliated unto God, not unto man. Because your affiliation unto man causes division in the body of Christ. It's better not to, even, you know, the scripture said, don't let your good be evil spoken of. Amen. It's better not to even discuss politics. Amen. Right. It's better not to even discuss it if it's going to cause contention. Right. If it's going to cause contention, it's better best not to even discuss it. OK, so let's say you move there because I, I, I hear the devil. I see I see the devil here. Let's say you move to a place where, well, I just won't discuss it with anybody. I won't discuss politics, but what is in your heart? What is in your heart? Let me show you something, saints. God knows the contents of our heart. He knows. He knows the adversity that we feel toward people that have different views than we do. He knows the adversity that we feel toward the scripture that is different from the views that we hold. And when you are not walking in the spirit, you open yourself up for the confusion. This world is a great big mass of confusion. And when you don't walk after the spirit and you are uh, tied up in the politics of this world, you open yourself up for that confusion. Let me show you. Let me show you confusion, mass confusion. Just just one little piece of it um, in America. I don't know what's going on in other nations, but I can't talk about what's going on in, in America. Now we have, we have, um, the possibility, there's a possibility that our Supreme court will overturn Roe versus Wade, right? Now Roe versus Wade is the, the legislation, the constitutional legislation that gave women the right to, um, 
abort babies, okay? It gave them a right to, to have an abortion, right? And uh, glory to God. The, the I, I, you know, I just got distracted because I just saw something. Let me, let me, let me pause a minute. One of the, someone says the leader of their countries does not have to be a Christian to be chosen by God. Absolutely true. That, that, that the, God can choose, God can choose someone, glory to God, amen. God can choose someone that is not a Christian. Nebuchadnezzar was not uh, given over to, to, the, to Judaism, glory to God, uh, but God chose him. Uh, Cyrus, amen, the Syrian that God was going to use to free Israel, amen, was chosen by God, but he was not. He was not a man, a Jew. He was not of Judaism. He did not believe in Judaism. Okay. So God is the one that set up these, these rulers. He said, he set Pharaoh up and just like he set Pharaoh up, glory to God. He, he set Nebuchadnezzar up. He set all these people up. God said he did that. Amen. So yes, that, that in answer to your question. Now, let me go back to what I was saying about confusion. Okay. Let me show you something. Now the Christian community, because they're, they're on both sides of this issue of overturning abortion. The whole nation is, there's upset now. There's, oh my God, is, you know, the, the, the Democrats are so upset uh, at the possibility of the, of the Supreme Court overturning Roe versus Wade. And it's going to, uh, and, and, and very much upset. They're picketing, they're, they're demonstrating, amen, um, the, the Supreme Court and other uh, uh, state courts amen, capitals, because they don't want that legislation overturned. They want to keep their right to have abortions, right? The Republicans, on the other hand, that's part of their uh, agenda. That's part of their policy. That's, you know, the things that's on their agenda. Okay. And so the Republicans are fighting back and the Republicans, you know, they, they, you know, they're, they're applauding this because the, you know, the, the court, the Supreme Court has been stacked with the, with Republicans now. And so it's a, it's a pretty good, um, it's a pretty good, um, I guess it's a pretty good chance that Roe versus Wade will be overturned. Okay. And, uh, so the, the Republicans are, or advocate, they're holding their stance, and and yes, we need to overturn this. We need to overturn it. We need to stop killing babies. We need to stop killing babies. Okay, now now watch this. The Democrats on the, this is this, and 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 think about it now. These Republicans, many of them are Christians. These Democrats, many many are Christians. So you got Christians on both sides of this issue. Now, what is going to be the argument? What is going to be the argument? Right of the, 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 the Christian Democrat. Okay. The Christian Democrat, uh, when the Republican says you're voting for an issue that, you know, to allow people to kill babies. And then now the, the, the Democrat is going to fire back right here. Right. Let me show you where they're going to fire back. They're going to come back with, well, you don't want to kill you, you don't want the baby to be killed in the womb, but you don't have any problem selling, selling guns to young boys, 18 years old, you can get two assault rifles and go in and kill 21 babies in school. Now you don't have a problem with that. You're sticking to your legislation on guns. You won't re reform the gun law. You won't, you know, you won't even do background checks. You know, there's some States like the state I live in, you don't even have to have a permit to get a gun. You, you know, you have a right to carry law and, and, and anyone can just walk up if an 18 year old can walk up and get assault rifles and shoot these little babies that, and where the bullets just tear them to pieces, just, you know, it, it just rips their insides. You know, it's a horrible, painful, uh, death. Now, if, it, it, so the Democrats are going to fire back like that. You want to hold on to gun legislation. You'd rather for the babies to be killed in the, in the classroom than in the womb. What's the difference? You see? So look at that. Look at the confusion there. Look at the confusion. What is that? That's just a, that is just a recipe for dividing con contentious division of the body of Christ. It's contentious division. 
and 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 everybody is holding their ground. Everybody is standing their ground. So, glory to God. Where do we go from here, saints? Where do we go? We go back to the spirit. We go back to the spirit. Because, watch this, Galatians 5 and 15. Look at what it says here. Galatians 5, 15. Write it down. But if we bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. We're going to consume, we're just like an animal feeding on itself, attacking one another, devouring one another. Take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. Are we hearing God here? Are we hearing God? Let's get back to the spirit. Amen. Let's get back to the spirit. Ephesians 6 says, we don't wrestle against 6 and 12. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Look at this. The, every evil politician, every evil government, every, you know, let, watch this now. When you have people that do evil things, Okay, let's let's leave the let's leave the government. Let's go to people that do evil things in our nation. People that you if you want to talk about abortion or killing a baby when it's full term. Okay, uh, 24 weeks down, 25 weeks, 30 weeks. Amen. Killing a baby that has a heartbeat. Okay, what is behind that? What is behind that? Is uh, are you going to are you going to cast the blame on the mother that does it? Or are you going to deal with the power that 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 inspired her to do it? OK, we are to deal with the principalities that are orchestrating these things. OK, not the people themselves. And so when you start to focus on flesh, which we're doing when we start talking about, you know, my man gets in and your man gets out and this and that. Glory to God. When we start talking like that, we have bypassed. The real cause, the real thing that is that is responsible for the disposition of our nations. Glory to God. We as sons of God need to go back. The scripture said we wrestle not. What is that wrestle? We fight. We fight. We don't fight against flesh and blood. We don't we don't become a Democrat or a Republican so we can war against each other. You don't you don't uh, pick a party and then war against the other party. No, we are citizens of the kingdom. We got to deal with the atrocities and the evil, the sin. Our focus is on sin, and sin is, 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 is glory to God, sin does not have a particular label. There's Democrat sin and there's Republican sin. There, whatever your party affiliations are in your nation, glory to God, there's sin in both of them. So where do you stand? You got to stand now where God placed you to deal with the principalities and the powers, you know, Daniel, Daniel was, was, uh, was informed that, th that, uh, the prince of Persia, amen. There was a principality that was ruling the, that was inspiring the Persian Kings. There was a principality that was inspiring the Babylonian King. These were principalities. And, and what happened? Daniel was praying. Daniel was praying and, but it was the angels of the Lord that were in the battle, in the heavens, fighting the battle of, against these principalities. Now, glory to God. Whoa, glory to God. If we would humble ourselves and pray, isn't that what God said? He said, humble ourselves and pray. He would hear from heaven. What heaven? Who is he going to hear from? He's going to hear from his angels. He is going to hear from his angels. His angels are going to be on the move. And his angels are going to be the ones that orchestrate the events of every nation. The angels of the Lord, the angels of the Lord, they got mobile. They, they were mobilized to, for so that the Israelites the, down in Babylon could live a peaceful life there. They were mobilized uh, in Syria that the that now that king would release them and, and allow them to come back. It was God that was initiating he was initiating all this through the heavens, not through the animosity, the passion of men. No. Glory to God. Amen. 
Look at this. Daniel 2 and 21 says, and he changes the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. Look at this. How much more specific can we be? It is God. It is God himself that removed kings. It's God that removed your president. It's God that removed your prime minister. And it's God that sets up a new president. It's God that sets up a new prime minister. It's God that sets the powers. And he says, now, and I, and I, the same God will give you wisdom. Glory to God. He'll give you wisdom and understanding. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What am I saying? Let's come back to the spirit. Glory to God. And let us not separate. Do you know we can get so caught up in, in our in, in, in our political agendas, our political agendas, just like the world. And we'll use platforms that God give us. This is so sad that, that, that I see pastors standing in their pulpits, preaching against presidents, preaching against senators. Glory to God. Um, uh, people in prayer groups are praying against this senator, praying against that one, praying against uh, this president, praying against that one. Glory to God. This prime minister, that prime minister. Glory to God. God, these platforms were not given to us. Prayer is not a platform. It's not a platform to bring division. Glory to God. The pulpit is not a platform to bring division. Glory to God. You see, the, see what Daniel said? Daniel said, glory to God. Therefore, he delivereth, uh, he gives rather, he will give you understanding. He'll give wisdom to the wise and, and knowledge to them that know understanding. See, some of us need wisdom. We just need to know because I, we may have an affection for a particular legislation. And we say, wow, God, it'd be good if, if this was passed so that these things wouldn't happen, uh, you know, whatever they be. Whether it be guns, abortions, or whatever, all any, whatever it is, you may have a, a passion, and your passion may be in the right place. Glory to God. But when you take that passion and put it on a on a platform called prayer, or you put it on a platform called the pulpit, now there are many people that are sitting out there, maybe sitting in your church, that came to hear from God. But now they're hearing the opinions of men. They're hearing your political stance. They may be of a different political persuasion. They came beyond their political um, persuasion. They came seeking God. They came seeking the wisdom and the spirituality of another kingdom. That's why they came to your church. They came to hear from a higher power. But when they come into the church and all they hear is the preacher preaching against um, this president or that president or this legislation or that legislation, they hear that on CNN and Fox. They could have stayed home to hear that. Glory to God. But they came to hear from God when they when they hear people praying about uh, this issue or that issue. Glory to God. You know, we, we you know, that if you're praying about the gun laws or, you know, the, the, uh, or you're praying about abortions or whatever, glory to God. You know, and if you pray, glory to God, if you're praying about those issues in a way that people can say, oh, my God, you know, this this is a this is a Republican church or this is a a Democrat church. And, and I'm a Republican because and because what you've done, you put your party affiliation on display instead of putting Christ on display, because now you can use the same platform prayer. Let's, let's talk about the wisdom that God can give you prayer or the pulpit. And we can pray for our leaders and we can pray for the disposition of the other issues. We can pray that God, God, please intervene wherever you need to intervene. Give our leaders in all parts of our government, wisdom and righteous judgment. Now, that hasn't offended anyone. If you say, just God, just give all of our, all of our leaders 
no matter what branch of government they be in, give them righteous judgment. Grant them righteous judgment. Let your will be done. Now, when we pray like that, we did not offend anyone. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't make it known that I'm, I'm a Republican, so I'm praying against this, or I'm a Democrat, so I'm praying against that. I, I you know, you, you're in the pulpit, you know, you're not Republican, you know, you're not, you're not, you're not Democrat, glory to God. You're just praying for God to, are you preaching, advocating, God giving wisdom, giving wisdom to those who serve in these offices, give them wisdom and righteous judgment. Give them righteous wisdom and uh, righteous judgment. You know, lead and guide our leaders. That's what God told us to do. He didn't tell us to pray against them. He told us to pray for them. Amen. And so, you know, we 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 have to decide now. Am am, am I going to move back to the spirit? Okay. Am I going to move back to the spirit? to where the higher powers reside, okay? We are a higher power. We are the higher power, okay? We're not subject to this, this mediocre thing. It doesn't matter who's in control of your government. doesn't matter who's in control of the government, Trinidad, uh, Jamaica, America, Canada, the UK, Australia, Africa, wherever you are listening to this broadcast, it doesn't matter who's in control, God says he know how to take care of his people. Israel, in my conclusion, Israel was down in uh, Egypt in the midst of 10 horrendous plagues. And God took care of them. God took care of them. And if God can take care of them, he can take care of us. Praise the Lord. I hope you've enjoyed. Amen. Uh, the broadcast today. Glory to God. This uh, Well, broadcast broadcast podcast today glory to god and i want you to join me because we're going to we're going to be coming we're going to be coming with these amen weekly we're going to be doing this every week this bible talk with mary amen by way of podcast but i want you to to like okay you i know we're, we're on youtube here so go down there and like it okay go down there and give me a like and subscribe to my channel. If you, if this is your first time listening and you have not subscribed, then subscribe because these podcasts will be coming. And not only that, our broadcast, the broadcast that we're doing with the Bible teacher every Monday evening at seven o'clock, join me there. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. And I'm excited. I'm excited about what God is doing. Amen. In the body of Christ. So please, and, and, and let me say one more thing. There is a notification bell at the top of the page and on the YouTube page. Hit that notification bell because God gives me things, saints. He gives me things in the middle of the night or he gives me things early in the morning. And I want to be able to bring them to you. OK, I want to just get up and bring them to you and go live and just say, guess what? Say, guess what God just said? OK, and sometimes these things will direct our footsteps. It'll it'll order our goings for that very day. So you don't want to miss anything. Right. You don't want to miss anything. Glory to God. So go down and like this, like this podcast. Amen. Like like it and then subscribe. If this is your first time, please subscribe. Amen. This helps us. Amen. It promotes the, the message. It gets the message out there. And that's what we want to do. That's your part. And don't forget. Click on that notification bell up there so you don't miss anything. Glory to God. All right. I got to go. This is Mary Banks saying, guess what? I'll see you next time.